All right, welcome everybody. I'm Ed Cruz. This is the last lesson. This is episode 60, 61. 61, sorry, I've been shooting all night and I've uh, lost track of exactly what videos or what number this basically is. This is a concept, I think I've talked a little bit about this prior before, it's called the power of one. And then when you look at it in the aspect of Siltao, right? Siltao, the idea of Siltao when you do the form is basically, you know, a uh, little thought, little idea. Basically the mental, uh, not only the physical, but the mental ability to, to focus on one idea, one idea, and then, you know, silent the mind so you have that single thought that you can concentrate and focus on. And that single thought we'll go into different directions with, but I wanted to talk specifically about the power of one. And the power of one, if you look around, is the, the constant example is uh, two things I, I, I think start, stem from this. One, I've always warned my, warned my students, uh, be very, very careful of your thought, all right? Be very careful of your thought because that thought carries a lot of weight on it. And whether you know it or not, that's basically the power of one. If you think about it right now, okay, if you think about it right now, everything that we can see from the phone, uh, this garage, my clothes, right, uh, what our refrigerator, at some point or another, none of this existed. None of this existed, right? None of this existed. What happened is back in the day, long, long, way, way back in the day, nothing, ha nothing existed, but yet someone had a single thought that stemmed from it. So each and everything that I can point out from this garage stemmed from a single thought. Someone thought of it, dreamed it, whatever, and it became eventually a reality. That's why the power of one, the power of that single thought has to be very cautiously got, uh, guarded and understood when you think like that. Because think of it this way, right? If you think you're not gonna be able to do it, guess what? You're not gonna be able to do it. 100% <laughs> guaranteed, you're not gonna be able to get it, do it. The power of one, an example from my own Wing Chun experience, <coughs> is, in, in, I think I, I've talked a little about this historically, back in 2000, right? Sifu, I, I took the first seminar in Tucson, uh, instructor seminar in Tucson, uh, officially became a Sifu student. Um, and uh, I wanted, and he basically said, what? Um, he basically said, you know, to be good at, at Wing Chun, you have to teach, right? <coughs> you have to teach. And, um, and, I, and that's basically uh, one of the hurdles, or many hurdles. Yeah, I had to teach, I didn't have a school, and he was far away from a, from a distance uh, to, from learning. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, and you know, slew after slew of, of, of excuse and, and hurdles that came about. But in reality, the power of one was basically a single thought in me that said, shit, I really want that fucking skill. Above anything else, I want that skill. I looked at it, I was like, God, that is so incredible. I want that ability, I want to be able to do what he does. And notice, at that point, when I decided, the single thought, I just wanted it, that thing I wanted. I didn't know how to overcome any of those other things. At that time, all I knew at that single point in time, that single uh, entity of desire of having that skill, I. I didn't know how I was gonna do it. And so I, I would see him maybe twice a year if I'm lucky, right? One seminar and maybe bring him into Chicago seminar. I didn't know how I was gonna do that. I didn't know how I was gonna teach because I didn't have a school. I was just a student uh, teaching, a, 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 a learning at another school at that time, right? How was I gonna get the skill? Uh, long distance, you know, three and a half hours by plane, Tucson, not working with him every single time, right? So look at all these hurdles. At no point did I even think for a second what those hurdles would be. That singular thought was so powerful that I wanted it more than anything else. I couldn't see anything else. I couldn't see the obstacles. Eventually, I knew the obstacles would exist, right? There were obstacles that would, that would come about to prevent me from getting to my overall goal. But that singular thought of, oh shit, I want this. Right? I didn't, it's almost like you don't even realize what, uh, what, all the, what, what else is in front of you. But just the fact that I wanted this so bad 
that that took priority and precedence over everything else. And then when the things and, and, and objects and, and, and distractions and everything came into place, I figured a way, right? Because of that singular thought was so powerful, I figure a way to get to that some way or not or another. So that's why I caution you. I caution you very much to be aware of your thoughts, right? That things are are are, are may may or may are basically happening, the status that you are because of that thought. So be wary. Be uh, maybe meditate and uh, do some tal to be have clarity on what you're thinking at that particular time. Okay. More on this subject later on.